Would you rather, for every kill you get, you DC for one minute, or for every death that you have, your ping drops by five? Now, for me personally, I think I might go with the, for every death that I have, my ping drops by five, only because I don't really feed often, but me DCing after a death, especially if it's late game, that could be the end of the game. That's almost like a death timer for being gone. Personally, that's the route I'm going to go. You guys can decide which route you're going to go as you play along in the comment section down below. I'm going to try and take each of these questions rather slowly as we go along, so that way if you want to see the slides and then maybe play this with your own, say, streamers on stream, or I should say viewers on stream, or if you want to play along with this on your own YouTube channel, you want to like have the video and take these still shots of the questions and play along with your own community, feel free to. So with that said, here we go. Second question. Would you rather place Challenger but lose 100 LP per loss or place in Bronze 5 but gain 100 LP per win? Again, I'm going to be going with the second one only because it's like, depending on how much time, if the computer's working and stuff like that, getting 100 LP per win, even in Bronze 5, means that you're not probably going to be in bronze or low elo long, right? Like, you go on a 10-game winning streak, and you're probably going to tear through all of bronze, right? So if you even, you know, let's say have, across a week of playing ranked, you go, let's say, 50 and 25. You won 50 games, lost 25 games. Overall, that means you've won 25 games. That's a lot of LP and just a lot of promos and stuff that you've won through. On the other side, right, you're in Challenger, but you already have to deal with ranked decay, and you also lose 100 LP per loss. I am think I'm going to go with the, uh, the second one there. Thank you very much. Would you rather that your top laner only TPs to a team fight after everyone's dead, for whatever reason that they do that, or your jungler only ganks your lane after you're dead. So for whatever reason, they targeted the enemy champion, but they didn't really gank until after you tried to go in and you died because they just never showed up. This one's uh, funny for me because I've had both of these ha happen often. So I don't know if it's um, an issue of would I rather or which one would you rather have stop happening. <laughs> In which case, I think I would rather though my jungler actually honestly... I'd still rather my jungler gank after my death, because depending on like the champion and stuff, they might be able to clean up, right? Like they're ganking, so let's say I'm bot lane. Me and the support went in, thinking we're trying to set it up so the jungler could come in and get them. They didn't, but me and the support got the enemy bot lane down to like a third health each, so that our jungler's like Master Yi. He just alpha strikes on in with his ultimate and just cleans both of them up. If it's the other way around, the top laner could be TPing into something, and then they could also maybe just die too depending if they have no CC or no a lot of damage or if it's like a team fight at Baron or whatever the heck the case is, you know what I mean? So, would you rather play with a Nautilus who only ults the tank in a team fight or play with a Tom Kench who instantly saves your tank immediately, instantly after you take even a little bit of damage? In other words, that cooldown is gone. Both of their cooldowns that are probably useful for other means are gone. And it kind of depends on this one. Like so far, I've been going with option two for all these. But for this first one, I think I would rather a Nautilus who ults the tank, only because Nautilus is a CC bot, right? If he ults the enemy tank, well, he still has his, like, his auto attack and his hook and like even his dri like uh, the Riptide to maybe deal with enemy carries to try and CC them as well, right? Like he can auto attack everybody on the enemy team and stun them. That's not on a cooldown for everybody, it's just on a cooldown per champion. So honestly, if he's ulting the tank, there might even be a good reason he's like stopping their engage or I don't know whatever the heck that might be for, honestly. But that could there could be a good reason there and the Nautilus still still CCs a bunch of stuff to Oblivion. If Tom Kinch is instantly saving your tank, because let's say it's Tom Kinch support, and so he saves your tank after they took like a little bit of damage, that's on cooldown, and now if like they have an enemy assassin or something, they're they're just going in for your back line. Your tank is currently gobbled by Tom Kinch, and Tom Kinch's saving mechanic is gone. Zed's just going for that Kog'Maw or whatever, like in that moment. So I'm actually going with the first one. Would you rather Support a Draven who blames you for every axe that they drop when it's not your fault, or play AD carry with a Blitzcrank who always hooks the enemy and gauge support to your face. Again, I've kind of had both of these, but more so the second one, and I just, if I'm playing against Leona, and I'm Jinx and you're Blitzcrank, and you keep hooking the Leona to me, not only does Leona have, like, not the, you know, most accurate of hitboxes, let's just say, but you just made it even easier for her to Zenith Blade to my face. I don't really mind going against Leona as something like Jinx or something, but, like, give me a chance, Blitzcrank. With the Draven, it's like, I could just mute him if it's really that bad, right? That's what the mute option's for. Like, just see you, Draven. Just <laughs> get good at another time. I'm not going to put up with your stuff. 
Would you rather play the game with no sound or play the game only using your feet? Now, if you're me, you're not the most flexible of people. So I don't know how I'd get my feet up to the keyboard and to use the mouse as well. But let's say ideally you could do that. You were flexible enough or your setup just worked with it. Whatever the case is, some people really rely on sound. Even if they turn like the uh, background music off or they don't play with the playlist, they still rely on sound, be it pings, how auto attacks sound when they're trying to CS or something like that. That could be very detrimental. For me personally, I don't know if I need sound all that much, but I just really don't want to play with my feet. I just, I don't, I don't, I... Unless they got washed by Jesus, they're not, I don't want them on my keyboard, and that's why I then we'll use my fingers later, and then I eat with my hand, like, you know what I mean? That's just not the look I kind of want for myself. Sound, it, it might suck a bit, getting used to it a little bit, but, like, as long as you can see the game, and you have decent ping and, you know, FPS, you should be probably good, I think. Would you rather be on the front page of Reddit because you got outplayed, or be on the front page of Reddit because someone's calling you out for your rank? This one's kind of iffy because obviously everybody on, everybody on Reddit is Challenger, so obviously anybody has the potential that's not Challenger to be called out on Reddit for this, to the point that no one, it never really actually happens. If you're on the front page because you're not the person being or doing the outplay, but you're the one getting outplayed, that's going to stick with you for at least the good 24 hours that's on the front page, right? If you got bodied by Bjergsen in like a Zed LeBlanc matchup 1v1, and he just takes you out, it doesn't matter how people feel about NA and international stage, you still in that moment just got bodied by Bjergsen on the front page, right? Like, that's there's just no recovering from that, I feel like. Unless you're someone that wants that kind of exposure, then you know what? Good for you. I'm going to go with the uh, be caught out for my rank, most likely because that's probably never going to happen literally ever. I really don't think anyone really cares that much, so. Would you rather get stomped in a seven minute game? And now the game that you open mid, the game just went so poorly that you guys literally lost and your nexus got destroyed at seven minutes. No idea why it happens, but it does. Or win a two hour long game. You win it, but it's a two plus hour long, just draining, grueling game. Me personally, I'm always down for some LP. So I'm gonna go with a two hour long game, despite the fact that I don't know if my computer will hold up for that. Because I'm on, I'm not one of those never surrender people, but if the game's clearly not just gone, I'm gonna fight because I just don't wanna lose the LP. Like there's LP on the line, I'll fight for it. If you wanna not surrender, and you guys wanna tell me, look, we, we can play better, we can do this, look, I'll jump in the boat with you, fine, I'll give it another shot, but because there's LP on the line. But like, as long as the game isn't like, you know, it's like zero to 32 at four minutes of the game, yeah, it might be time to surrender at that point, right? You know what I mean? Would you rather your favorite champion is never strong, but they're never weak, or your favorite champion rotates between being the top tier and bottom tier every patch? Personally, I'm instantly going to go with the first one, because that's kind of where Jinx is right now. Jinx is strong, but she's not top tier, but she's strong enough to still play and make function, while also not being super weak. If she was like the top tier to carry, then there would be definitely highs in terms of rank of winning and stomping, but there'd be lows when she's weak the next patch or something like that, and it'll fluctuate too, and depending on the meta then, that might not always be the greatest. If she's suddenly strong, like an assassin meta, then it doesn't really matter all that much, unless she's maybe one-shotting assassins or something like that, in which case she's just getting hotfix nerfed immediately or something. I don't know with the balance team how that would actually work out. I'm just going to go with the kind of under the radar strong but never actually weak kind of option. Would you rather have to teach macro to a friend that knows nothing about League or have a friend announcer pack that also has nothing to no knowledge about League whatsoever? So in other words, it's an announcer pack of your friend that has nothing or no knowledge of League, so they're just saying random stuff because they don't know anything that's going on, versus having to teach someone that doesn't know anything about League of Legends, like the macro, and maybe even the micro too, and all that stuff. I'm going with the second one for comedy's sake. I think that'd be kind of funny when someone's like, look, these like little blue wizard guys are like coming out the uh, gym at your base or whatever, and that's supposed to be minion spawning or whatever. You know what I mean? Maybe not? Okay, that's fine. And then last but not least, would you rather fail every flash into a wall or always flash after you die? In other words, sometimes, especially if you have ping issues or FPS issues, you thought you flashed something because you're trying to hold it for the last second and it doesn't happen and so you die and then you flash and it's like, well, I want my flash back now. Well, you can't have it back, so it's just gone. I honestly would probably go with failing every flash into a wall. Because it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna die, right? Like, maybe you're trying to flash over a wall to steal a dragon, you failed it, you don't steal a dragon, but you're still alive, right? If it's always dying and always losing your flash, that's just a lose-lose, I think, in my- that's- that's just pure despair right there at that point, right? There's no- there's no winning at that point. 
you're dead and you don't have flash when you come back to life. So you might just die again. It's whatever. You know what I mean? So, there we go. Would you rather League of Legends Edition 2? I'll definitely do another one of these in the future, because the last one I did is what made us do this one. People liked it. They kind of liked this idea. It takes me a while to come up with some really good ones, so this won't probably be like a weekly thing, but thank you so much for watching this one if you did. If you want to play along, answer with your answers in the comments down below. Again, if you're like a streamer and you want to do this with your viewers, you can always maybe try and mute me a little bit and then uh, play along with your uh, viewers and your stream, or if you want to do your own YouTube channel, screenshot the different questions and then play along with your uh, viewers as well. But that's all for this video. I don't know which video will be next, because I actually have a lot of kinks. So until this time, take care. GG. Get jinxed. Thank you for watching.